I was recently both listening to and participating in a discussion and debate in a German context that was pretty interesting for a variety of reasons. There were a number of topics, but the one topic that really stood out was a topic that had been proposed by a young girl, a young female, I'd assume late teens, early 20s, and her suggestion was basically that the state should finance her birth control. And her reasoning for this, and there were a number of reasons, although two stood out the most, again, was that women have the greater burden of having to engage in birth control and make sure that they don't get pregnant. And the other one was that it's also quite risky given certain side effects with hormones. And you know, admittedly, the pill and similar hormonal means of birth control, they can definitely have side effects and can be deleterious to your health. And so her reasoning was that the state should finance this vis-a-vis -vis public health insurance. And I'm bringing this up because I think it is very, very reflective of certain basic facts about our existence, facts about female nature, young female nature, and the state of culture and society. Let's get the one thing out of the way, right? The idea that the state should finance your birth control is effectively another way of saying that the state should finance your sex life. Now, last time I checked, even though humans are driven to want to boink, and boinking is something that humans enjoy, boinking is nonetheless a choice you make. And by way of analogy, I would say that there are many things that humans need to engage in that are not state finance, like buying your groceries and getting food. The fact that this particular female was citing that females bear the greater brunt of responsibility in terms of birth control and health risks with regards to birth control is kind of irrelevant. Your average male, for example, is taller, has greater bone density, more muscle mass, and therefore has a higher calorie requirement per day. And so more than theoretically, he needs to spend more money on food than your average female. Should males, as a result of this requirement, then not appeal to the state to finance their dietary options and desires? Because what you can really highlight here is a number of things. One is the kind of solipsism that is fairly unique to women. Not the philosophical concept of solipsism, mind you, which states that the only thing one can know as extant as existing is one's own mind, but a kind of layman's perspective or interpretation of solipsism. Because imagine the kind of mentality you need to have, the kind of audacity to think that your sex life, particularly as a female, is somehow a right with respect to your health, right? Sure, admittedly, most humans do like to boink, but boinking is not a requirement for living. Therefore, demanding that public health insurance cover that is a little bit odd, to say the least. But think about it. Think about the solipsism that that requires. This strange female individual living in her own little bubble, her own encapsulated world, oblivious to the rest of reality. When counters to her silly propositions and arguments were offered, it shouldn't surprise anyone, she went for the emotional jugular. She talked about the issues that she faced and how it's stressful and she worries about her health. And on top of that, she offered the rather flimsy argument that everyone in his mother was running around boinking left and right. Another projection of solipsism, mind you, because, because her idea was that men had the same access to sex that she did. And so they were constantly engaging in sex. And therefore, they would be behind the idea that the state should finance the birth control in this case. And I don't think this is unique to this female, who clearly was some kind of indoctrinated university student based on her rhetoric. But the fact that a person can live in that sort of bubble and think that something like that is appropriate and reasonable, and that people standing outside of that bubble are just supposed to accept it, is a testament to the real and very perceptible levels of solipsism that, unfortunately, many females suffer from. In essence, it's a version of me syndrome. Me, 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 me. 
oh, I have this problem, and therefore not only must other people solve the problem for me, this problem is universal. She had a problem, apparently, with birth control, some unwanted side effects, some issues, and therefore that justified her argument that the public, everyone else, should pay for her sex life. Now, I know, gentlemen, how absurd that sounds to you, because, frankly speaking, it sounded absurd to me, too. But if you could just for a moment get inside the head of a young female, presumably attractive, presumably living in a bubble like a university, imagine what the world looks like to you. You have a sex life, you have lots of social opportunities, you have all these things that are assumed to be a universal experience because she is experiencing it. And here we have again this problem of self-extrapolation, extrapolating her for her own experiences because it's unimaginable that someone might not have the exact same experience as she does for an optional habit. It doesn't matter if humans are driven by instinct to want to boink. What matters is that it's still an option. Governments have tried to pay for people's food and do similar things. It was called communism. It didn't work very well. But again, this is another reflection of general female psychology this projection that the state should assume all responsibility for virtually all things. And we know that overwhelmingly women vote for the more collectivist option. And this was no different. And despite a battery of logical arguments coming at her, left and right, she was still stuck in her position, even towards the end, emotionally claiming that we did not understand what she meant or her argument. Of course, there was the other side of the argument that men need to take more responsibility for birth control, but the options are precious few and little. And very few people wanted to mention the simple fact that, in my humble opinion, women would never want to hand over the control they have regarding whether or not they get pregnant to men. Because that is an awesome, potent power they wield. Ever since the pill has been introduced, they can entrap men, they can deny men. That is an amazing power, whatever the risks involved. Sure, hormonal birth control is not always safe, but it doesn't matter. It's still an awesome and potent power they wield. And do you really think that women in the majority would want to yield that power to men, even if options, good options, were available to men? I'm going to argue probably not. And so I told you the story because it's such a perfect reflection of the post, 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 post modern female in the current year. The 2022 female who thinks it's a perfectly reasonable proposition for the state and other people to finance her sex life because she can't be bothered with the side effects of the birth control that she chooses to take because she chooses to have sex. We have all sorts of instincts that we may or may not succumb to. I dare say this was a perfect reflection example of female psychology on display, totally immune to logic, reason, and counter-argument, and just bubbling over with emotion. And if we were to be perfectly frank and look at the greater landscape of society, we would see that this is how most things are perceived these days. All this emotionalism has come to dominate the political sphere, the cultural sphere. I think a lot of that can be traced back to not just feminism, but the general gynocentric trend that we can bear witness to throughout our society, university, culturally, politically, etc., etc. And there we have it. This seems to be the direction we're in now, as well as the direction that things are likely to continue in. Despite the absurdity of this particular snippet of a story and tale, it is quite dark indeed if you think about it. Not much to look forward to. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. As always, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, share the video. If I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. Take care of yourselves. May the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.